scientists say that climate change is driving extreme floods, wildfires, and heat. And we could certainly see and feel the effects of climate change here in Minnesota this summer from our hottest June on record in Minnesota to the smoke from the Canadian wildfires that produce unhealthy quality air, air alerts. Um, for days in July and even here in August for the entire state to talk about climate change and what is being done in Minnesota to address it as well as what you can do about it. We're very pleased to have with us Joe Ward and Wally Wad. Thank you for being with us. You're you guys welcome. and your kind of this is your area of expertise climate change and that why don't you tell us a little bit uh, first about, about yourself. Well, I'm about uh, your interest in climate change. Yeah, I'm, I'm Joe Ward and uh, my wife and I have lived in Woodbury since 1974. I, I was an electrical engineer by training and I was just sharing with Jody earlier, my, my father taught me all about electric motors so I thought why, why shouldn't cars be propelled by electric motors? But, and now they can, but it was the battery and now they can. But I'm a retired 3M person and uh, then, then I retired from that and, and started a, a business and <laughs> now I'm retired from that. <laughs> so I'm a, uh, I, I could only be called a climate advocacy advocate at this point. Um, <clears throat> why? Uh, why I'm interested in climate? Um, my family, um, excuse me. My, <clears throat> my family and I spent a summer in Los Angeles when I was 16, and the smog left a, a lasting impression. Uh, I remember going up on the Griffith Park, which is a yes. mountain observatory, and looking over the LA basin. It was just a sea of mud. Uh, and, you know, when you went outside, the smog just burned your eyes. And <clears throat> the, the climate, the, the, uh, what we had here recently, a week ago, reminded me a lot of oh, that. Oh, so scary. And at the time, we said, why don't they do something? Well, you know, California did something. Uh, they, uh, they introduced uh, uh, regulations on auto emissions, and they cleaned up their, their, uh, they cleaned up their atmosphere. Um, so I want to do something is, is why I'm here. Um, you and know, then, and if, if, like us, you know, you're a person of faith, whatever your faith, we're taught to take care of our creation. Let's call it environmental stewardship. And we believe it's our responsibility to care for, for this creation that we're part of. And Wally, what about your interest in climate change? Well, I'm um, a retired pharmacist and uh, I've lived, uh, my wife and I, Jeannie, have lived in Woodbury since uh, 1982. And I was trained at the University of Minnesota to believe in science and facts and evidence. And when um, climate scientists became concerned about increasing uh, warmth of the atmosphere in relationship to uh, the concentration of greenhouse, ga greenhouse gases, I became concerned and decided I needed to do whatever I could to limit the effects of climate change. So what is being done here in Minnesota to address climate change? Well, in a word, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I know it's a complex thing, but what, are, what is being done here? Well, transportation is one of the top four sources of greenhouse gas pollution. A key step forward, we're happy to see, has uh, been this Clean Cars Minnesota initiative that Governor Waltz and the MPCA have just won approval from. Uh, it's a bit controversial, but it, it, it really is the right step. It focuses on ways to electrify transportation. It helps make electric vehicles affordable and available. It basically adopts the environmental standards that California used uh, to eliminate smog there. Uh, another is the eco legislation that was just passed at the end of the session. Uh, it took some important steps towards Governor Waltz's goal to eliminate greenhouse gas emissions from electricity generation by 2040. It allows for incentives to convert from propane or natural gas to electric heating. And this could be a heat pump or geothermal. And Wally, what, what are some of the cities and communities doing to address climate change here in Minnesota? Well, across the country, uh, 180 cities have taken the step to declare that they're going to become uh, climate neutral and uh, get their energy from 100% renewable sources. 
And um, many cities in Minnesota, like uh, Duluth, uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Rochester, have uh, developed um, plans to deal with climate change. And um, they may call it a uh, adaptation or a resilience plan or a climate action plan. So um, we would like to see cities in all Minnesota, Minnesota cities develop a plan and uh, deal with that um, to reduce the uh, sources of carbon in the atmosphere. And then what can we as individuals, what are things that I can be doing to address climate change? I mean, well, it seems like, such, again, it's such a complex thing, but we can do actually, something. Actually, it can be quite simple. Okay. Um, reduce or stop burning fossil fuels. Now, that, that sounds hard, but it isn't as hard as it looks. Uh, a valuable resource I found uh, that I've, I've consulted a lot is a, uh, agent, is a nonprofit called Rewire America. And if you look at www.rewiringamerica.org, you can find quite a lot of information. They've done detailed modeling of the entire United States economy. Uh, and their data shows that actually since electricity generation is moving from fossil fuel based to renewable, that if we all simply stop burning or stop using um, fossil fuel um, appliances or motors or what have you, and we don't have to throw them away, just when it's time to replace them. If you replace them instead of, uh, with electric, instead of uh, a fossil fuel burner, these, the, the appliances, I mean cars or, or washing machines or so on, uh, last for years, 10 years, 25 years sometimes. So when you buy something new, don't, don't uh, guarantee another 20, 10, 20, 30 years of burning of fossil fuels by buying that, buy instead electric. If you do a new house, if you're building a new house, uh, specify all electric. So. And what about if you have an exist, existing house? I mean, what, are, like, what would be something I could do tomorrow? To well, if your in? furnace gives out or your air conditioner, you can go to a heat pump. If your water heater uh, fails, you can go to a, a heat pump version of a water heater. It's got a little compressor on top of it, like your refrigerator. Um, clothes dryers, uh, there's actually a heat pump clothes dryer that's available now that will take the air or the, the humidity out of the dryer air and run it down the drain, and you don't even need an exhaust vent. So there are, there are a lot of things you can do. But one of the strongest actions you can take is every decision that you make, uh, choose electric. Well, we just have a couple more minutes. What would be um, some resources or information where people can get, get more information about ways that they can reduce or to address climate change? Yeah, a great resource is Project Drawdown at drawdown.org. And they have listed a whole range of uh, ways to combat, that an individual can combat climate change. And another uh, good way to do that is uh, um, uh, if you are able, you can put solar panels on the roof of your house. Another way is to uh, make changes to your diet, reducing the amount of meat that you eat, uh, eating um, lower on the food chain, plants and vegetables, and, uh, and eliminate wasted food. Um, food, um, one of the biggest environmental sources of carbon emissions is agriculture and forestry. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so if you um, are able to uh, eat lower in the food chain, less energy is consumed to uh, eat meat. And um, wasting food is another uh, issue that you can deal with. Um, about a third of all food gets wasted. And anytime you waste food, you also waste the energy that went into producing it and transporting it. So uh, watch carefully what you buy and then what you throw out. Final advice well, for our viewers? Well, uh, we like the saying, think globally, but act locally. We can get involved by asking 
our government officials, city, county, state, as well as federal, to take action. Call your city council person or county commissioner. We can support things like the current federal infrastructure plans. Call your legislator. Uh, we can support Minnesota state actions beyond the ECO Act and clean cars. Have lunch with your state representative or join an advocacy group such as MNIPL, Minnesota Interfaith Power and Light, is an organization that both Wally and I are on the policy uh, board for, or Minnesota 350, or Isaiah has a strong effort, Minnesota Center for Environmental Advocacy, Sierra Club, Climate Generation, and others. Uh, go to Minnesota City websites and see what they're doing. Particularly look at Eden Prairie, Northfield, Maplewood, St. Louis Park, the city of Egan, of course, St. Paul and Minneapolis have both done things. Maplewood has a recent plan that's really excellent that they've put together. Have a look at them. Uh, just concluding, now is the time to take action. Each year we're seeing more severe manifestations of this changing world. And each of us can make a difference. So uh, if you'd like to get involved, try one of these advocacy organizations. Or you can look up Wally and I and <laughs> find <laughs> us. Uh, my email address, if you're interested, is ward.joe at comcast.net. So please feel free to contact us or one of these advocacy groups. Together, we can do this. Well, it really has been a pleasure to have you both with us today. And great information for all of us. So thank great. you. Thanks, thank Wally you and, and Joe. Us. Thank you. We really appreciate that. We'll yeah. be back with more right after this.